Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Stones Over Bones. My name's Andrew Carr, and I'm in Worcester's Rural Cemetery, established in 1831. I came here today specifically to find the headstone of Daniel Farber, which is directly behind me. Before I show you the stone, why don't I first tell you a little bit about who this man was. Daniel Farber was co-owner of the L. Farber Company in Worcester, Massachusetts, the largest maker of leather shoe components in the country. Unfortunately, he found this line of work to be a constant source of pressure and tension, so he took up nature photography in his late 40s to help relieve stress. With his 35mm camera, he took countless photos of diffused flowers, colorful reflections in water, and stark silhouettes of tree branches. He is best known, however, for his black and white photographs of gravestones. From 1958 till his death in 1998, Farber traveled the full length and breadth of New England, photographing 7,500 different stones and creating a collection of 15,000 photographs, nearly all of which can be viewed online. Using an 8x10 view camera, Farber would take full shots of headstones, sometimes with a backdrop, as well as detailed images. In order to capture the stone's details, he made great efforts to photograph the stones in raking sunlight, sometimes using the aid of mirrors to achieve that ideal 30-degree angle. He was also a tireless advocate for gravestone preservation, contacting town officials when Everstones were deteriorating. Because of his initiative, the Phipp Street Burying Ground now has a fence around it. He gave lectures at gravestone seminars and wrote articles for various books. In 1976, he was a founding member of the Association for Gravestone Studies, where he helped fund the research department and choose articles for their annual publication, Markers. In the early 1970s, he became very good friends with Jonathan Fairbanks, the founder and curator of the American Decorative Arts and Sculpture Department at the MFA. Together, they rescued the headstones of Captain Anthony Gwynn and John Foster, both of which are now safely preserved at the MFA. Considering his love for this art form, I was surprised to learn that Farber did not want a gravestone carved upon his death. His wife Jessie, however, disagreed. And when he died in 1998, she called upon Jonathan Fairbanks to help design it. Fairbanks first approached the John Stevens shop in Newport, Rhode Island, which has been in operation since 1705. Their work is in such demand that people say to get a Stevens gravestone, you have to order it when you were born. But they agreed and asked what Fairbanks would like carved. Because Farber was of the Jewish faith, soul effigies, death heads, angels, and other Christian emblems of resurrection wouldn't have been appropriate. Nature, in fact, was his true religion, and Fairbanks used Farber's many photographs of bare winter trees as inspiration for the tympanum. Coincidentally, this carving has an uncanny resemblance to the tree directly behind it. The slate is dark gray, with beautiful light streaks slanting left to right. In terms of the inscription, the typeface is based on the letters carved into Roman monuments, such as the Trajan Column. The names are in all caps and were chiseled by master carver Nick Benson. Note how the arm of the E has no serif, and how the horizontal bar curls gently at the end. Note the long leg of the R, and the square tittle over the I. Note the wide hook of the F, as well as the flared asymmetrical cross stroke and observe how the stem of the seven curls slightly inwards. When it comes to the border, a simple line follows the edge of the stone. At the top right, however, there is a curious diagonal line that seems to lead us to the back of the grave. When we walk around, sure enough, we discover that this line is actually the strap of a 35mm camera. How appropriate and touching to have a camera hanging from Farber's grave. It's really fun to see a modern device carved in such an old tradition. I love getting close to examine the lines of the lenses, the texture of the grip, and small metal buttons. At the top, we again see his name, but this time it is written in friendly or cursive, like an elegant signature. The inscription is also in more casual script typeface. Conceived by both Fairbanks and Jesse Farber, it reads, Nature was his god, kindness his way, photography his art. Two flowers are chiseled by the bottom corners. On the left is a small group of dandelions, Farber's favorite flower. On the right are daisies, which represent the first flower Farber ever photographed. 
To me, the front represents Daniel's business side, formal, dignified, to the point, whereas the back is warm and inviting and reveals the passions that made him happiest in life. Considering all these elements, I really feel he would be pleased with this. After devoting so much of his life to the care of gravestones, it's touching to think that Daniel Farber contributed to the art form he loved so much. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoy these videos, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit those funeral bells for new content.